going to go over caching in Python and how with a few lines of code you can implement caching for your function and give your application a great performance boost. So the function we need to implement caching is LRU cache from func tools. So you can do from func tools import LRU cache. Now let's say we have a function called get my web page and it takes in a user ID and all it does is return a formatted string that says my page and then it has the user ID that we just passed in. Uh, now let's run this function just to see everything's working properly with let's say 100. And now let's run it here. As you can see, we have the output that says my page 100. And just so that we know when the function is executing, let's also put a print statement here that says executing function. And now let's run it again. And as you can see, we're executing the function and returning 100. If we call the same function again with the same argument, we're going to be carrying out the function, returning the output, carrying it out again, and returning the output. What caching gives us is for a given argument for a function, if the result of that function is very deterministic, and we know that uh, it won't change a lot over time for the same argument, in that case, instead of carrying out the function every time uh, the function is called with that argument, we can return the cached values uh, from the second time onwards. This way, the first time, yes, we're going to be executing the whole logic, but for the successive calls, instead of actually executing everything, we can just return the cached value, which we can do very, very quickly. So let's see how can we implement that. It's as simple as adding the LRU cache decorator. Uh, so let's see. So the only thing we change right now is add this decorator um, on top of the function. And now let's keep everything the same and run it again. So as you can see, we the first time we're calling it, we are getting the print statement here and then the output. However, the second time we're calling the same function with the same argument, we're not getting this print statement. That's because the function is not executing. We are just returning the cached value. In very high level, what Python is doing once uh, after the first time, after the first call is made, is it creates a hash map in memory with the key being the argument, in this case 100, and the value being the output of that function for that uh, for that argument. So in this case, it was my it was my page, and then the user ID. So the first time when we're calling this, uh, it actually checks the cache and sees there is no value. So we have to actually execute the function and return the output. But the moment we return the output, we are storing the this output in that internal hash map. Uh, and the key is the argument that was passed to the function. So when the second time we're calling the function here, instead of executing the function, we're just returning the cached value. And that is the reason you don't see the print statement for the second call. So now let's call the function with a different argument. So let's say we do uh, get my web page with 200. Now let's see what happens. So we called it with 100. So the function executed and we get the output. Second time, we don't execute the function because we already have the value cached. So we just return it. However, the next time we call the function with a different argument, we don't have uh, that, uh, we, we never called the function with 200 before. So our hash map is empty for that value 200. Uh, because of that, we execute the function again and return the output. But if we call the function with the same argument once again, we would expect the value to be cached at that point, and the second call should get the value from the cache, not by carrying out the function. So let's see. Let's save it first, and then run it here. So as you can see, we're executing the function with 100 the first time. Second time with 100, we're just returning the output from the cache. For 200, we're executing the function the first time. 
and for the second call we are just getting it from the cache so after the first time you call the function with 200 what it does is it adds to that internal hash map that it created a key of 200 and a value of my page 200 so when we're making the second call with the argument 200 we are just returning this rather than executing the function so as you can see if the same user makes multiple requests to this function in a short period of time we can return the cache response back instead of doing all the calculations every single time so it can give you a very big performance boost just to tie all the points together let's just imagine let's just import the time module and then let's just say that the function does some complex calculation uh, so we're just going to sleep for three seconds and the assumption here is complex calculations uh, being made right so let's see and then let's forget about this and let's say we're making the call with a uh, argument of 100. So what do we expect? We expect the first call to actually execute because now we don't have this hash map, right? So we expect the first call to actually execute the function by sleeping for three seconds. But the second call should be very, very quick because we will be returning the cached value. So let's just print here first call made and then let's put here second call made now let's run it as you can see there is a three second pause after the first call is made because we are executing the function and returning the output however the moment we make the second call we immediately give the response back because we have already cached it in the previous call so you can see how implementing caching carefully, we can get a great performance boost. However, we have to be careful because once you cache the result, the next time you're reading from the cache, your data is not being calculated dynamic. So, only, so we only want to use caching for use cases where we don't want very fresh data all the time. We're okay with some data being stale. Now, the next thing we can look at is the parameters that you can pass in to LRU cache. Before that, let's just see what LRU cache is. LRU stands for least recently used. So it's called least recently used. What that means is over time, if you're not, you, if you're not passing a particular argument, that argument's output is affected from the cache. So let's say if your cache can take in only three items, uh, and let's say the three items it can take in, um, the, the, the three items it has cached is 10, 20, and 30. The first call was made with an argument of 10, the next one with an argument of 20, and the next one with an argument of 30. Now when a new call is made, let's say with an argument of 40, your cache is full at this point. So what happens is the first value that was put in the cache, in this case 10, gets evicted from the cache and the new value 40 gets put in. So let's look at that uh, through an example. Let's say our cache can only store two values at one time. The way we define it is just putting a max size of let's say two. Uh, you can put as many as you want, but yet you do have to keep in mind that the larger the size of the cache, the more the memory footprint of your application. So let's do it with two. And let's do let's get rid of our sleep statement here. And our print statements here. Now let's see. And the first time we're making a call with 100, the value will be cached. And the second time, the value is going to be read from the cache. And now let's make some more calls. Let's say let's make a call with 200 and another call with 200. Same thing. Uh, when we make the call with 200, we will cache that value because we have a max size of 2. And the second time we call 200, it's going to read from that cache. Uh, 
and let's just run it for our clarity. As you can see, the first time it runs it uh, and returns the output, second time it just returns the cached value. For 200, it does the same. Now, the, this is where it gets slightly more complicated. Let's say we call it with a new function now. Uh, sorry, a new argument. Let's say 300. And let's say we call it again with 300. Now let's see what happens. So same thing as before. For 100, we're executing the function, returning the cached value. For 200, we're executing the function, returning the cached value. For 300, we're executing the function, and then returning the cached value. After this, if we call it with 100 again, which was the first value that was cached. It was 100 that was cached first, and then 200, and then 300, right? But your cache can only take two items. So you need to effect either 100 or 200 before storing this new value 300. Given it's a least recently used cache, the value that gets evicted from the cache is the one that was stored in it the earliest, in this case 100. So let's see, at this point, line 23, in our cache, we should have 200 and 300 cached. And now that we're calling with 100 again, we would expect the function to be executed again, even though it was cached at some point in time. So let's save it and run it again. So for 100 the first time, the function is executing, and then it's getting the cached value, same for 200, same for 300. But if we, when we're calling it with 100 again, as you can see, we are executing the function. That's because 100 being the oldest value in the cache, it got evicted and we put 300 in it. So that should give you an idea of how LRU cache works and how the size you give here matters. Uh, so it totally depends on your application needs, uh, but you need to strike a good balance between performance and uh, the memory footprint of the application. And one other thing to touch on this topic is, if you remember the first time we did not pass it anything, in that case what happens is an unbounded cache, so the cache keeps on increasing uh, if you don't give it uh, any limit. So in this case, given there is no uh, limit that we're giving, so we're not bounding the cache, we would expect 100 to be still cached even after 300 was cached. So let's see, we're running it again. As you can see, up to this point, up, up till this point, it's all the same. But when we're calling it with 100 again, it is returning from the cached value because it didn't need to evict it given it's totally unbounded. But I would recommend always putting uh, always bounding the cache and putting an upper limit, which can be any number that you can think of uh, as long as you're being realistic about the memory usage of your application. Mm, and two other things that, that, that are important to know about when it comes to LRU cache is how can you actually monitor how your cache is doing? So let's do that first. As you can see, the moment you wrap your function with LRU cache, you get access to cache info. You can call this function on your, uh, call this method on your function and get statistics about your cache. So let's see, you can just copy this one and we can just print it here with uh, cache info. And let's print it out here. Let's see. So you have, as you can see, you get your cache hits, how many times the cache was hit, how many times you missed, the max size, and the current size. As you can see, the max size is 4. And in this case, the current size of the cache is 3, because you have 100, 200, and 300 uh, in the cache. Hits is the number of times your cache is being hit. Miss is the number of times it's being hit and it can find what it needs. Uh, 
and max size is the number of items, uh, the number of maximum items the cache can store at a time, current size being the number of items it currently has. So you can use uh, the cache info function to get some statistics about how your cache is doing and adjust the max size parameter here accordingly. And the last question to answer is how do we clear the cache if we need it to? So as you can see, every single time we were done running the function, uh, the cache was uh, being like evicted from memory because the function is over. Uh, so every time the function ends, of course, the cache is being cleaned. However, within a program, you can explicitly clear the cache for a function by just doing uh, the same way you did for cache info. You just have to do a cache clear. And let's do that. Let's give it a size of 2. So we have 100, and then we're calling it and getting the cached value. 200, we cache it, we get the cached value. Uh, and then let's get rid of this. Uh, let's say we are clearing the cache after that. And then let's try to get 100 again. Let's try to get 200 again. And let's run it. As you can see, the first time we're running the function and then getting it from the cache, 200, we're running the function, getting it from the cache. And then we're clearing the cache. Because of that, when we're calling 100 or 200 for both, we are executing the function again because the cache has been cleared. So you can imagine, if you think for a given, for your use case, let's say you want your cache to be cleared every 30 minutes, one hour, 120 minutes in your web server you can like store the time of when the cache was first cleared and then every single time a request is made you can compare that time with the current time and either return a response from that cache or uh, alternatively clear the cache so that uh, you kind of keep on refreshing uh, the data but yeah that is pretty much all that I had on LRU cache and how you can use it to get a very good performance boost. But you will have to be careful about the use because uh, there is the likelihood that your application might not need caching given if you provide real-time data all the time. And you also have to be careful about the size so that you bound the cache all the time uh, and not unnecessarily increase the memory footprint of your application. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching the video till this point. I will catch you all the next time. Bye-bye.